hello guys welcome back to another interesting episode of trash it so in the house today we have your usual um guests we have um funsha we have ade and we have my beautiful co-host yori okay and then today we have brought in miss sahara i mean if you're a follower of the show and if you watch the show you would know miss sahara by now because she comes on our um, program um, quite a, a bit and we've done a lot of interviews on her miss sahara is the first super Serena worldwide okay and miss sahara has come on the show today to answer a lot of questions that we have that you guys have about the trans community okay um if you saw the show we put out last week where we had an all men panel and we talk we talked about <laughs> transphobia um you guys have watched that video so most of you have watched that video and this is a follow-on from that video and we have miss sahara here today to lecture all of us okay so if you have any questions we have a lot of people that have sent in some questions for miss sahara to answer today so we're gonna kick it off the first question i'm going to be asking miss sahara is given that you saw what you watched the video from last week and you you were in the premiere you were answering some of the questions that the guys had and you were putting them straight okay what do you think about the views of the guys from the panel from last week's show okay first up thank you so much for having me <laughs> um yeah i watched it and from what i can remember because i'm my recollection may vary as the saying goes uh, uh from what i saw i think there is a lot of misconceptions and lots of um you know because i don't blame the guys obviously there is lack of inexperience and education on the subject uh, and they were talking about transphobia and having a fear. Not ha well, some of them were like, they don't have a fear for trans people. And I'm like, well, you don't have a fear for trans people, but your reaction to finding out that someone is trans, one suggested violence. And I was like, well, that is, you're actually afraid of trans people. So it means you're playing into that phobia territory. Uh, but yeah, there are lots of things that, that we say that weren't really correct, in my opinion. But I have to say that they were all seem to be very open minded uh, when they said things like allowing everyone to live as human beings because the planet is big enough for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I thought that was really eye opening, especially coming from Nigerian men. I think they're mostly Nigerians, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. mostly Nigerian men. So I, I found that very surprising. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Sahara. Um, one of another question that someone sent in to us was would you and obviously given from what you've just said would you understand why some people might have a fear of a trans person for example someone who's going through the journey and haven't completed their journey um i mean excuse my my language if i'm yeah. not using the right terminology so because we're, we're speaking from people who don't really, who don't know anything about the trans community yes. and they're trying to learn mm. so some people are saying that we're afraid of a man right who maybe has done some of the changes maybe has uh, um um breasts for example but they haven't changed their genitals mm. right so we're afraid of that because which means part of them is male part of them is female how can you help them to you know to to relieve that fear yeah well first up trans women are not men uh, i think is a that misconception needs to be seriously debunked people mm -hmm. often have that uh, idea that oh you're a man before and well this is why whenever articles are writing stories about trans people it's very important that language is also being corrected as well uh with the same things like oh uh, she was born a man no one is born a man we're assigned male or female at birth mm -hmm. you know someone you can say a trans man was assigned female at, uh, male, male at birth and a trans man was assigned female at birth but saying oh she was born a man or born a woman a man or woman is an adult using the word a man or a woman sensationalized trans stories and makes trivialize the histories of trans people just like you are a woman right now, you weren't born a woman, you were born female, and then you grew into womanhood. Uh, no child grows up 
uh, becoming an adult from childhood. So um, then uh, when it comes to when it comes to relationships and body parts, like I always use the analogy, if you see a woman like you even actually use that analogy, like I, I remember you and I were talking about this the last time I was talking to you ladies and I thought I, I was actually very proud when you, you use the same analogy, like if you see a woman walking down the street or anybody walking down the street and you find that person attractive. Um, the first thing that you look at the person for is their exterior, not their interior, not what they have between their legs or their bodies. So um, it's only until you want to get intimate, that's when you see the body part. Like we always say, body part does not define gender. Body part does, gender is a social construct. It's what we give into ourselves as socially, as uh, human beings. We, when we get give back to us, they said, okay, you have this body part, so you are this. If you have that body part, then you are this. Mm -hmm. So we classify as human beings, we need classification for us to uh, be able to explain things. So, but when it comes to um, uh, uh, trans people, and if you find a trans person attractive, and uh, when it comes to this, what you do in bed sexually, does it make you gay? If, if, for example, if you have a trans woman that has a penis and you sleep with a trans woman that has a penis, does it make you gay? Just because the trans person has a penis does not trivialize her gender identity. What makes your sexuality straight is your attraction to the person's identity and how the person uh, present themselves. For example, I am a woman. I present as a woman. I have a vagina. So in that case, a man who sleeps with me would okay. obviously be straight. He's not gay. There is no way a gay man will find me attractive. If a gay man finds me attractive, then... There's something, something wrong, wrong. and he's exactly. not gay, or maybe he's bisexual. Yeah. Okay. So um, it's difficult for some people because of the way uh, society and media have classed trans people and made it so weird that people always go for that, oh, all trans women have penises and all trans women are gender non-binary and all trans people, we're not all the same. We're not homogeneous. Everybody, there's um, uh, we're different. There are different uh, trans people out there, there is a trans umbrella, but non-binary people are under there, cross-dressers, uh, uh, transvestite, transsexuals, which I am a transsexual, is all under there. And me as a transsexual took medical steps to becoming my true self. There are some trans people who do not need surgery, who do not feel that they need surgery. Those trans people do not have a thing called gender dysphoria. You, the people who have gender dysphoria are people like me, people like me who never felt comfortable looking in the mirror, like, what the hell is that? You know, I, this is not me. And then take steps into correcting it. So basically what we go through is medical. And then we use medicine to correct what we go through. And um, I, it, it makes me sad when people just put their foot down and say, oh, I will not date a trans person because the trans person is a man. And I'm like, well, you are being transphobic when it comes to that, unless the trans person is not your type. For example, you can say, oh, you're not my type. So what is your type? Uh, if I fit into your type and you find me attractive, for example, I make you have erection, especially if I'm standing in front of you naked and you feel like fucking me. Sorry for using that word. Uh, but I hope this is, I can use the F word, right? That's oh, fine. Oh, yeah. oh, sorry. <laughs> you feel like fucking me if I'm naked in front of you, then you are a straight man. There is nothing wrong with that. You need to condition yourself to understand that trans people are not men. If you feel that the woman that has a penis is not your type, then, then you don't have to date her. You can just yeah. quietly remove yourself from the situation. You don't have to result into violence or rudeness or harassment. You can just quietly remove yourself from the situation. If you like to take up a penis in your anus or like to play with penises, it doesn't make you a bad person and it doesn't make you gay. When you find a man attractive, for example, you see a man who identify as a man, someone who identify and come across and say, this is me, I'm a man, then you are gay for finding that person attractive. You're only gay if the person you are finding attractive have the same um, gender identity as you and the person you find attractive is the same as you, then you are gay. But okay. the person that you're finding attractive doesn't matter if they have certain body parts. So far they identify as the opposite sex, you're straight. Okay, thank you, Miss Sarah. I know you already have some questions, but I want to come to Ade. Ade, do you have some any questions for Miss Sarah based on what she said so far? <laughs> hmm. Okay. 
<laughs> you know what? She makes some good valid point. But looking, I mean, if I don't know her, you see her with that boot, you feel good. Hmm, girl is nice, you know? You know what I mean? Lovely, lovely but boobs, yeah. I would prefer to know that she's trans, but if she's not, if she's if I'm not aware she's trans and she's got a pussy, you you're gonna get down with that. Do you understand what I'm saying? But for me, knowing that she's trans already, even if she's got a pussy, is a no, no, no. Because at the back of my mind, I'm still gonna think that, that was a man, bro. Then you're transphobic. No, no, no. I don't hate you. Yes, don't no, no, you're you. not. I'm not saying you hate me. I'm not yeah. saying you hate me. But well, I'm just I'm telling not, you, no, your no, views I, transphobic. No, it's just I was, like you I said. Will see you, I mm. will see you as me buying those China doll to fuck sex doll. That's yeah. not transphobic because you are classing me as a robber and plastic, and you're looking down and dehumanizing me and saying no, that I'm plastic. Dehumanizing you. No, I'm that's just what you you're said. Not a, you're not a woman for me. There you go. So I'm trying to be transphobic. So no, you need to own your transphobia no, and own it as a badge. Woman, if I don't know and I see you in a club, see your boobs, I'll be hot there with my eyes open like rah. I need to. Then you're transphobic. Boobs. And you let me explain to you why. The mere fact I will find out that oh, she used to be a man. I was never a man. That is a misconception. Were I was you, never a man. Were you born you, a male or female? Whether you're born male or female or assigned no, no, born male, male or not female. born male or female. You are I was born human. Whether oh. you're assigned male or female at birth doesn't make you a man oh, or on, woman. Is, when you when you was when they gave birth to you in hospital, I'm sure they wrote on it. Did I, put, did I put man on it? And that's the no, question I'm asking. Become, when they gave birth to you, did I put a man on your you name? You grow from a baby boy. So a teenage boy. Uh -huh, here we go. And then you become a man later. Yeah, exactly right. But I never yeah. developed that way, though, did I? I so, never. Developed. If I had developed that way, right now, as I'm sitting down facing so, you right now, I would sound you, like you and look you, like you. When did you decide to transform? Uh huh. There you go. Transform. This is why I told you I don't like using the word transition. Okay. I when did you? I did, did, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Let me take that out. When did you decide to have um to change or to develop into a lovely, beautiful woman? Is that better? I grew up, I grew up like any other woman. I grew up like any other woman where my grandmama let me explore my gender identity freely like any other woman. Well, are, you a, are you African? I'm Nigerian. I am a Nigerian. Nigerian, grew up in a village yeah. with my grandmama. Let me finish, let me tell you my story. You were in there. So I'm telling you my experience, right? Because you've never met a trans person before and it's totally understandable. No, no, no. Your views, no, your views. No, no, but your views, but you may have met, I and mean, you may have even slept with some and don't even know. <laughs> That's the concept. <laughs> By the way, you may have had sex with so many trans women and did not enjoy it and did so, so much, very much enjoyed it, but still don't know it. Mm -hmm. That is the concept. I'm, that is what I'm trying to tell you right now. That See, that's deception. Okay, but I think you, should all carry, you should all carry ID card to tell Hold you who you are. We're going, <laughs> we're going all over the place. Let so let me, go back. let me go back to when I started as a child. Growing up like this, many people have that misconception, even J.K. Rowling and so many people have that misconception, that trans women were men that lived like Caitlyn Jenner, who were men who lived with women, married women, you know, loved sleeping with women, and they were all men with beard, burly men, and then all of a sudden become a woman. If you check my body right now, I have no testosterone in my body. That is because I have been pushed up for so many years. Putting a blanket ban and saying that trans women are not women, it makes you transphobic. And if you are transphobic, hold the badge on your chest and go like, I'm a proud transphobe. And I don't give a shit about that. And I will respect you. I will even shake your hand. Or if you don't want to touch me, it's fine. I'll tell you, I'll praise you and say, yes, you're a transphobe. Stay in your lane and I'll stay in my lane. That is totally understandable. But I can assure you that you will go out every day as you go out every day, you have to then be living in a living the life of worrying and a life of constant fear because you're worried that you're going to perhaps see a, a beautiful woman and always imagine that oh she's a man oh oh my god maybe she has a penis mm -hmm. she doesn't have a penis that is you have to um you have to uh, sensitize yourself of that fear as a human being uh -huh. that when you go out it no. Why don't you just keep it in your pants then? Why do you have to go about sticking your penis in every woman that you see if you if you're so worried about women turning out to be trans? Because there are a lot, I can assure you that there are lots of trans women out there who will never tell you they were trans. My mom told me so many times and said, there are even some, I even have friends who are married and their husbands don't know. Mm. Yes. Wow. I have friends who are married, their husband don't know. I have friends who have prominent jobs. In fact, I even saw one on TV this morning on a very famous TV talk show. 
and she's trans and nobody knows and she's very famous so there are lots of trans so in people India, or in nigeria I'm not telling you, I'm not telling you what. I'm not going to tell you the full details because if I tell so you, you the full details, everywhere. I'm out in the person. You guys are everywhere. You're making it sound like, oh, it's so evil. It's like a disease. Okay, Probably. so can I, can, I just, can I just come in here? Can I come in here real yeah. quick? So um, so let's just be very mindful because are they, we're addressing human beings just like us. And I think the same no, 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 respect no. No, no, that no, 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 we, we want, we should no, also no. give no, as well. No, 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 I want Ade to, to speak openly without censorship because okay. listen this i'm is, not gonna yeah. lie to you believe no, this me is a safe Patria, space. Ade, this is just a, to get a number Ade, she, this is she, a safe she, space she say whatever you like say you know, whatever she, you like she the way i'm looking at her thinking them even still looking at her knowing that she is i'm still thinking that breast is tempting <laughs> yeah, but that is the problem you see so for that reason you're depriving yourself just like in religion that you deprive yourself of certain things you don't want to eat certain meat you don't want to wear certain things because you're worried about what your god will do to you after life and this is I the mean, issue I don't worry about that. but this is the no but this is the issue we have as humanity i know you're a muslim aren't you i'm a muskris why do you why do you have to deprive yourself of something i'm not saying i number one i don't fancy you so let's just put that out there you know my type. No, but, no, but, no no let me just say the truth because people often assume that all trans people want to sleep with all men most mm -hmm. men who often see trans people because we all dress sexy we look like hoochie mamas and we're all in my case i dress like a whore so most men often assume that i want to sleep with all of them i have a type I'm a human being and I have a taste as well, you know. So mm -hmm. just because you find me attractive doesn't mean I'm going to jump on you and beg you of to course. have sex with me. So, but people often have that misconception that trans people, oh, don't bring it near me. Oh, you stay here. Oh my God, you're a man. And all of that. I'm like, well, I didn't even look at you, number one. So mm -hmm. why are you worried about that? So we have to put that into context as well. Just jumping into conclusion that people are going to sleep with you, even though they didn't come to you. Just because you found them attractive, this is the reason why the murder rate when it comes to black trans women is usually yeah. by black men, fellow mm -hmm. black men doing it to tra black trans women. That is because they, they find a woman so attractive, then they find out later on that she's trans, and then it results into violence or That's harassment. Wrong. And I don't blame the men. Because it's their orientation. I blame the orientation. I blame the patriarchy that we impute in our men right from the beginning and teach them that, oh, you cannot be gay. Oh, you can't trans, you can't sleep with a trans woman because if you sleep with a trans woman, it makes you gay. In inherently, the hate comes from the homophobia because they always look at okay. two men in our community and go like, oh, black men, oh my God, men sleeping with man is just disgusting, you know? So because they look at it with this, so much disdain and lack of education on the subject. So when they see a trans woman, they result trans women into the same uh, bracket as gay people. And that is what we need to dismiss, demystify. Yeah. When a trans, not everybody is our type, right? For example, Adi, mm -hmm. Adi finds me attractive. It means that Adi will not find certain cisgender women attractive cisgender women who shave for example there are cisgender women who have hair on their chest i grew up in nigeria and i see it i see women who are tall amazonas with no hips no breasts flat chest with beard and hair on their chest and they're still cisgender women and they will not find them attractive and they will find other cisgender women that look like me attractive so are you going to say that those women are not women are you going to class them as less of a woman because they don't look like me <coughs> That's Sarah, the point that we have to put into contest. I, I'm loving where this discussion is going, and welcome on board, Keon. Um, one of the questions that we have sent to us, which is something you've touched on, and this is about educating people. And the question is Are there trans women that genuinely want to keep their male genitalia? And if yes, given that they can afford to go the full length of transitioning, what is the rationale around that? Because, you know, it's, it's a very broad, it's very broad, and it's also relative as well. Just, some people may not do it because of medical issues, because they have other medical issues. Like, I have a lot of trans friends who don't take hormones because they have health issues, mm -hmm. so they can't do it because, because taking hormones is like you're in your period. To, uh, 360, a day, 360 a year, it's like every single day you're in your period. So people often assume that being trans you wake up one morning just because risky makes it so easy and being a cross-dresser, people assume that being a transsexual is so easy. You have to take hormones constantly for the rest of your life. Someone like me, 
I have to take hormones for the rest of my life. So or else I'll catch osteoporosis, which is the bone marrow disease yeah. or brittle bone disease. I could, I could get that. And that I have to go through surgeries. People think it is easy. Do you think like when men start going on about that, I would say, can you go and lie down on a, on a doctor's slab and open your legs and ask a man to chop off your penis? How would you feel about that? It's not that easy. It comes from severe pain and trauma of being born with something that you feel so disgusted with just the way these men feel disgusted with being with trans women i feel disgusted being me that was how bad it was i tried to commit suicide twice because i felt so uncomfortable mm -hmm. being myself so people often as you when they see this pretty exterior they go like oh my god you look so good blah, blah, blah. there's nothing going on deep down there but i have my inherent self-hate that was the reason why i had to take step to become my true self right now i am loving myself because i am my true self because i am in a part of the world where i'm giving that afforded mm -hmm. that right and the opportunity for me to be myself in places like nigeria where i tried to commit suicide twice there are a lot of trans women like myself back there right now going through the trauma that i went through when i was in nigeria where nobody wants to listen to them doctors are not helping them you know so there are lots of trans people who want to have the surgery but they don't have the facility or the opportunity to have it yeah. and some trans women feel comfortable having the penis most of these men who are complaining are always watching she male porn Sorry, trans people for using the word shemel, but I'm going to use it. They watch shemel porn on Pornhub or Xtube and all the other sex sites. They go on there to watch trans women dominate cisgender men by having sex, having anal sex. So there are lots of people in where we come from in Nigeria, because I saw in a review that in Nigeria, they consume a lot of LGBT porn in Nigeria. And most of these people may be in cisgender relationship or mm -hmm. uh, opposite sex relationship. But the problem is that we have to stop looking at it as oh it's wrong and then people are dying and people are going through hell just because of uh this view that it's wrong and it's not right you know it's there is nothing wrong with it it's very human we're all human and it's very natural it's biological for people to do those things just because you don't like it just like i don't smoke i don't do drugs it's a choice it's a personal choice i can say that i have my surgery the way i feel as who i am is not a choice but the way i look is a choice i don't not having a penis is a choice mm -hmm. there are some trans people who make that choice and say you know what i want to keep it because i enjoy using it some people don't want to have a vagina because they're worried that they will lose their sensation and then i tell them that i'm sorry yes surgery could go wrong where it may not you may not have your sensation but in my case i have orgasm like any other woman i get wet like any other woman so there is no difference. The only difference is that I can't give birth. That's the only thing. And men always use that to insult me when they find me attractive. When they find I'm a trans woman, they always go, oh, I want to have babies. Someone used that statement in your last conversation as well. Well, I want to use babies, but I'm sorry. When you meet a woman on the street, the last thing on your mind is not making babies. You just want to have sex. You just want to hit it. Not about making babies or fertility, finding someone attractive when you meet them for the first time. Fertility is the last thing, or potency is the last thing you even think of. You just That's find nice. her attractive for who she is. Mm -hmm. Then fertility comes later. Okay, okay. Mr. Dara. Okay, I'll yeah. just ask my other question because I'm I'm sure Funsho and Kian were so interested, and I don't want to take this opportunity away because Celia yeah. and I speak to you on a reg. So <laughs> yeah. you touched on sexuality and sex, and just to clear the confusion, especially for someone like Abby. How will that work? Because we have a lot of trans people that are heterosexual and we have a lot of trans people that are homosexual. And for the mind, how does that work? If you've identified we as a trans you yeah, we have to educate ourselves on yes. what sex is and what sexuality is, what gender identity is and what sexuality is, because we often conflate the two. And that is because the line is so badly blurred by society mm -hmm. and the way we talk about LGBT people. People often confuse it also because history has lumped us together, trans people and the sexuality section of the LGBT, because trans is an identity. Mm -hmm. lesbian gay bisexual are all sexuality asexual sexuality but then again queer is an identity but most of every you know everybody in the lgbt community who identifies as, as a queer person so it's people have to remember who you are is who you go to bed as so for example being trans is who i go to bed as and wake up as sexuality is who you go to bed with with 
who you go to bed with and play with in bed, but who you are as a gender identity is who you go to sleep as and wake up as. So for example, I wake up as me, a woman, and I go to bed as a woman. And when I'm going to sexually stimulate myself, touching myself or sleeping with a man, I'm going to do it, that is if he's a man. That is what makes me straight. I'm straight, I'm not gay. You know, people often say, oh, you're gay because you're trans. I'm like, sorry, I'm not a lesbian. I don't find women attractive. I find men attractive. So people often go like, okay, so because you're trans, does that mean, can you be a lesbian? Yes, we have trans lesbian. Caitlyn Jenner is a trans lesbian because she fancies other women. Mm -hmm. There are bisexual trans people. There are non-binary people who sleep with both as well. So sexuality, anyone can be sexuality. Any, anyone can fit into all the various sexuality we have, lesbianism, homosexuality, lesbianism and homosexuality are all the same. Gay, they're all on their homosexuality. Uh, we have uh, bisexuality, we have asexuality, and so many others on there. And um, when people conflate the two, it confuses the two terms. So for me, I am a straight woman who likes men, but there are other trans, I have many of my trans friends fancy women. So it makes them trans lesbians. So they are lesbians, they identify as lesbian. But there are lots of lesbians who would not want to date a trans person, either because of transphobia or because the trans people don't look like what they go for. Like, I don't know if you ladies got to read the article that I wrote for Medium, that I wrote on Medium, that I sent you ladies way, way back when you were going to do that interview with the guys. Yes, yeah. Yes. You're ready, right? Yeah. Yes. So the article, guys, I'm, I'll suggest you read it too, because that article I talked about, because people were accusing genuine, or, or genuine, genuine, the, uh, yeah. the former. Yeah, the artist. Yeah, they were accusing him of being transphobic for not finding a trans woman who was in the house attractive. And I'm like, I'm sorry, she's just not his type. He's not, it's not that clear cut. You just, because somebody doesn't find you attractive. For example, if Adi turns around today and tells me, Sahara, you're not my type. I'll go like, yeah, that's totally understandable. But don't use transphobia as a reason. Don't use, don't say, oh, just because you were born a man, I will not date you. No, just tell me that. Maybe I don't have breasts, or maybe I'm not tall enough, or maybe I'm too short, or maybe my hair is too dark, you yeah. prefer blonde hair. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Then I'll go like, okay, maybe that is, yeah, I'm totally not your type. Just in your only day, white women. I was okay, yeah, I totally understand that. But in a situation where you start using my life history to insult me, medical, by the way, life history, to insult me by saying, oh, because you're a man, I'm not going to date you. That is an insult. You can politely just let someone down and if you feel uncomfortable with them, you can say, oh, sorry, I can't date you. Like I always tell men who smoke, I'm sorry, I can't date you. They're like, why? I say, because I don't like the smell of smoke. Oh, but okay, uh, what if I stop for you? I say it will not work because we'll end up arguing over it because it's a, you will have the craving. Oh, yeah. I'll give up for you. And I said, no, I don't, I don't, I won't believe it until I see it. So I'd rather not go into it because it will cause drama. You know, so having a, having a type and a taste, and when it comes to sexuality and gender, people always conflict all those different aspects. It's very broad and it can be very confusing for people, but I try to like compartmentalize it as much as I can. Okay. Miss Ira, I'm just, this is going to take me straight. You, you talked about sex and, you know, sexual intercourse and all of that. One of the questions someone had for you was when you have sexual intercourse, do you reach orgasm? Yes, I do. I do, but it depends on, you have to guide a man, just like any other cis woman. As a cis woman, you know where your body, you know how your body works, you know. And these questions you're asking me, by the way, you can ask me because you're my friends and I'm open to answer yeah. them. Not yeah. all trans people feel comfortable talking about that, especially talking about their body parts. Mm. But I'm here as an educator to open myself up for people to ask these questions. And I think it's good and I welcome them. So for example, in my case, when I had my surgery, I, it took me a few months to heal. After when I healed, I started experimenting, like watching porn and touching myself to see how, how it works. Because if you don't know how your body works, how can you, uh, how can you have sex with someone else? Majority of people just lie down there and just expect the man to do the work mm-hmm. and not really direct the man on what you want with your body. Most women are afraid to vocalize what they really want in bed. So it's very important that as women, we tell the men what tickles your funny. For example, you know how to tickle yourself so you can tell the man how you like it. Then the man can do it and then you can both have a very healthy sexual relationship. 
So you know, you know, for for the women, there's the clitoris that helps the woman to reach the orgasm, and for the men, I'm not really sure what it is. Is it the, 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 the head of the Yes. Is it the head of the penis or something? I don't know. So for someone who has gone through that sort of, um, um, you know, transition. I have a, I have a clitoris. Oh, you, oh, right. Okay. So this is it. Clitoris. This is the what I wanted clitoris. to know. Because it's done with the nerve ending on there. Right. There's a nerve ending. It's created exactly replica of what is an M6 woman. Oh, right. And, yeah. But you have to, people always forget this, right? There is an, a diagram that I could send to you to look at. And in that picture... You can see how humans develop. This is the thing. People often just jump into the, they don't go deep into biology and how it works. Do you know that both men and women come from female? We're yes. all, on, we're yes. all created yes. as a female egg. Yes. So we grow and then the clitoris turns into a penis. You know that, right? So what, they, yes, what, yes, what, men have, what men have as penises is an elongated, practically is an elongated, elongated clitoris. Right. That's it. Long clitoris. <laughs> no, no, it's an elongated clitoris. No wonder Nini said your clit has left your body. It has uh -huh. left. <laughs> so it's, it's the clitoris that grows out that turns into a penis. So, oh my so the wow, nerve wow. ending is, is practically the same. So what happens is, okay, so for example, both men and women have very sensitive post, post, prostrate. I have to only find I know. That one. So when you tickle with the anals and stuff like that, they find it yeah. very enjoying. That's the G spot for men. G spot for men. Well done. Men love that. <laughs> <laughs> Women loves it too. Women loves it too. So so it's very human. It's a very human thing. It's just that we don't talk about it, and especially black people, we don't. We look down on it and go like, oh, it's so ugly." But when they are behind closed doors, they go very naughty. They are even the naughtiest. Mm -hmm. But also, they don't go like, "Oh, this is wrong. I don't like it." Until when they are behind closed doors with you, and then they go crazy in bed. So yeah, so clitoris is like any other. The way it works, it looks, function. When I'm standing, my friends that have been naked in front couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it either. Because when I had first had the surgery, I honestly thought I had a roadkill between my leg. I felt like wow. maybe like a trailer smashed the chicken or something. Mm. And I just picked the chicken and slapped it in between my leg. And I was like, what the hell have I done? But I wasn't really nervous because I knew that it was going to be all right later on. And it, it was when I looked at it in the mirror and I walk, I have mirrors all over my flat. And every time I'm walking around, I'm walking naked. And I think it's one of the, I wish I'd done it when I was like 12 or 10 years old. I won't be so confused and wanting to commit suicide because I felt so uncomfortable growing up when I was beginning to reach puberty and not seeing my body develop like my fellow sisters and girls around me that I grew up with. I noticed that my breast wasn't growing and I had yeah. one thing in between my legs and I was like, what the fuck is that? I don't want that there. I, you know, I kept on tying rope on it and pulling it backward and pull. I was so uncomfortable with it. I really didn't like it at all. I'm one of those people that would take a knife and cut myself because there are a lot of young trans people who uh, who resort into castrating themselves that way and cutting them, cutting it off. So I was re it was really that bad for me. Okay. So, yeah. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much That's, for sharing that. Yeah. That's very powerful, actually. It really is, powerful. isn't it? Funcho, yeah. let me come to you. I'm sure you have some burning questions you'd like to ask Mr. Hara. Uh, actually, all the questions I have written down has been uh, answered by her in all the statements she's been making. Uh, and uh, yeah, regarding the penis, the head of the penis is called the glands. Yes. And I know that uh, the penis has uh, 4,000 nerve endings, while the clitoris has double of that. That's 8,000. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> But it's a common biology. It's a what? common biology subject that we don't talk about. Even in Nigeria, uh, we weren't exposed when we were studying biology in 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 school. They don't teach us that. They don't let us. They don't sh share that part with us. In yeah. general, even in society in general, we don't talk about that. And yeah. that is a misconception that people have. And that's why they assume that oh, because you have a oh, it's a man-made blah blah blah. But actually, we all we're all born with vaginas in the mm. beginning. We are not born with, but we were created in conception in the womb. We all had a vagina and then we grow into the separate different genders. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's correct. And that's why you check for the sex of the baby at a certain time when the baby is developing. Exactly. Because we are all female, then we just separate at, at um, some time. Yeah, so my questions on ground, you already answered. The first one was if you ever reach orgasm, uh, which okay. was the one you just uh, answered. 
Uh, the other one I wanted to ask was the difference between gays and trans, and you just you also answered that already. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one I had, uh, I think you also answered it, which is, uh, so I don't know which is the right term to use, so I don't fall into the same, um, I don't end up making the same mistake like I did make, made, like growing up, of course you, okay, the, the sex you are assigned at birth, like a male. Mm -hmm. at, uh, so when you now started this transition up till now, one question I wanted to ask was, do you at any point still feel the masculinity or anything? But I think you, you already said it that maybe you take hormonal drugs and stuff like that, which you... No, I never felt like a male. That's the thing. You know, if I felt like a male, if I, the only time I, 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 people use the word male to me was when society tells me, stop dressing up that way, stop looking that way. When I was trying to express what my in, in, innate sense of self was telling me, which is my cerebral cortex, was telling me what to do. It was telling me, oh, just like you, Ade, when, you, oh, sorry, um, Funcho, when you wake up, mm -hmm. the first thing that comes to your mind is, oh, let me get up. Let me do my man ablution or the things that you do as a man, right? In my case, when I wake I up, I go to pee. When we wake up, our child uh -huh, you stand first. and pee and all of that. No, the I never did that. First, then uh -huh. we go to pee. <laughs> so yeah, exactly right. So but as a woman, I do what woman wants to, uh, what women want to do because my brain tells me to do that. I want to put on a bra. I want to dress up like the, as a woman I am. I feel comfortable doing that. I don't feel like the idea of as a man, me with beard and shaving and all of that and grabbing my crotch. Hell no. Hell to the no, I'll kill myself first before I will ever do that. I never yeah. felt comfortable about any of those things because it didn't feel right to my brain and who I am as a person. So um, like most trans people, especially trans women, is the same as well. But you have to also remember that non-binary people are in this subject as well because non-binary people, not all of them have dysphoria either. They're when you say non-binary, can you explain to the viewers that might not understand what you're talking about? Well, non-binary people are people who don't, they're not intersex by the way. So there's intersex people as well. And intersex, what do you mean by intersex? So intersex people are people who were born with genital anomaly. For example, they were born either because they had two genital parts, genitalia, or sometimes it could be obvious. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's just hidden in the womb. So uh, sometimes it could be in a womb, for example, uh, as Ade is right now, you see Ade, Ade presents as a man. Amazing. He may have a womb. He means mm. he's intersex and has a penis and everything, mm. but he might have a womb. So is it, is it correct if I say they are hermaphrodites? Hermaphrodite is a rude word and uh -huh. it's a medical terminology that is not yeah, medical terminology. Like, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. intersex people don't like that. They prefer yeah, to be called yeah. intersex. Mm -hmm. So they are intersex. So there are lots of intersex people. You can't tell. Sometimes you can't tell who an intersex person is. For example, Casta Semenya is an Casta Semenya. He's the most famous one. Yeah, and yeah has uh, maybe you could tell mm -hmm. and then people often conclude that she's a trans man but she's not mm -hmm. because she identifies as a female so an intersex person could be trans and an intersex person could take steps to becoming their true selves because when we're born in nigeria in nigeria for example and many parts of the world the parents often make the decision to pick a gender and and when the baby is still young and force the baby to have surgery and do all sorts of things in order to make the baby and then bring the baby in one gender. And then when they grow up, their brain is telling them something completely yeah. different. It's like, what the, hell is, what the hell is going on? So this is why it's very important. And intersex campaigners have been saying that parents should let their kids be themselves when they're growing up. If my child says, oh, I want to wear a bra or I want to do something, I want to dress up as a girl, just let them be. When they, when they become, because they're socially doing it. It's not, they're not changing any gender. They're not taking any drugs. They're not doing any surgery. Uh, Daily Mail and the other Rupert Murdoch media, which are right-wing media organization, will make you think that children are having surgeries, which is not true. Okay, so you let them grow until they reach the puberty age, which is 12, 13, when the voice drops and when things start changing, uh -huh, then you take the blocker tablets, which would preserve their puberty until they hit like 16, 17. Then they can now decide what they want to do moving forward. Okay. So being intersex is completely a different thing, which is biologically. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Non-binary people are people who were born and they see themselves and go like, I don't fit in male or female. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes they fit in male or female. But most cases they are in between. 
they don't want you to use male pronouns for them. They want you to use the they them pronouns. Mm-hmm. You know, they want to change the gendered messaging that we put in words, like for example, cameraman, chairman, uh, you know, fireman, and all of those things. They want you to call them chairperson, call them, mm-hmm. uh, call them a fire person or something. Just use a more, be a bit more cautious mm-hmm. to the identity. And in a situation where you meet someone and you find that their gender identity is a bit obscure or a bit uh, you don't understand their gender. You look at them and they're presenting as something, but you don't quite understand their pronouns. Politely ask, say, excuse me, please, do you mind? Can I ask you what your, what your pronouns are? And then they can tell you. It's just out of human common courtesy. You don't need to make a fuss about it. Most people go like, oh, I'll never say that. Oh, you're a man. Look at you. You look like a man in a dress. There is no way I'm going to address you as a man. Then you're causing more drama for yourself and causing more drama for the person and you're spoiling the person's day, you know, and it's just not worth it, in my opinion. Let's just be more cautious and courteous towards each other. It's just common human decency and respect. Okay. Thank you very much, Miss Sahara. Kiyom, I'm going to come to you. Do you have any questions for Miss Sahara? You're on mute. Mm. Yeah, I think he's trying to unmute. Uh-huh. Oh. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, sorry, I came a little bit late <laughs> and I was having issues uh, trying to log in. Okay. Sorry. Right. Yes. Um, actually, I don't have, um, I, I'm trying to come up with a question, yeah. but um, from the brief explanation you gave i i could say that um i had an ample knowledge of um um how to address a trans person and a gay or lesbian or the you know like yeah so i I, I, I just, uh, maybe in the in the course of this discussion before it ends, if uh, something pops up, I probably will chip in and ask more questions, but um, just thank you for the enlightenment. Thank you very I, much. I think I got, I got um, a different uh, perspective uh, than what I originally know. Um, yeah, for me, no, thank you. Just um, what I can say for now, but I'm still thinking in another direction yeah. where I can come into the question. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, I think it's. I think most people who have never encountered a trans person before, especially Nigerians, often assume that all trans people are like risky, the risky person. Yeah. I'm sorry, but uh, not all trans people have that life history, and I'm sorry, not all trans people are doing it because they want to make money. Not all trans people are doing it because some trans people have to be themselves because that is who they are for survival reasons. That is who they are, and just because you've never experienced a trans person before, it doesn't make you a bad person. It just shows that that is your orientation and the way you are educated on the subject is completely wrong. And I, what I ask for anybody, any human, is just open your mind and ask questions. Yes, you can still say, you know what? I don't want to sleep with a trans person. That is totally fine. No one is saying you have to sleep with a trans person. And many mm-hmm. trans people will not want to sleep with you either. It doesn't mean they hate you. They just don't find you attractive. And you don't find trans person attractive is also the same thing. So, you know, people often have that crazy idea that mm. oh, trans people are very promiscuous. And, and they just want to sleep with anybody. Yeah. And in fairness, yeah. most trans women do that. As in like they force themselves on men because they, you know, they try to overcompensate because mm. of mm. if a man pays them a little bit of compliment and start jump, wanting to jump into bed with men. Yeah, some trans people do that. But it doesn't mean that all trans people do that you know so that is that is the that is what i'm trying to correct and debunk as much as i can but the problem is that in nigeria trans people are not being platformed on national tv mm-hmm. you're not given opportunity to be seen on television we're not given opportunity to be platformed on big uh, mainstream media this is why thank goodness we have social media but unfortunately the narrative that is being put out there by the trans girls in Nigeria are actually the wrong narrative. And that is the reason why there are so many uneducated people about the subject in Nigeria. If we're given the chance to be platform on national TV, I'll gladly sit down there and educate people. 
on why being trans is medical and why being trans is a survival issue and why being trans is human and very biological like any other species. We have trans plants, we have trans species, we have gay fishes, we have LGBT types of animals. We see dogs having sex with each other who have the same males, so um, who have the same sex. So we, is, is, we have, uh, I don't know if you watch uh, David Attenborough on BBC, where they were doing that, like a, a documentary where the fish is actually trans, a trans man, and our trans male fish. And I'm like, every species have it. Only human are the one who look down on it because our sense, our conscious orientation and sense of self have said, and religion, by the way, and culture, but mostly religion. I will blame this on religion because for many, many years, trans people existed very quietly without any harassment. Even gay people in Nigeria existed quietly without any issue. But then religion came in, the radical form of Islam and Christianity, evangelism from USA, which is the most radical. You think America is a Western world, but I'm telling you the most radical Christians come from, it's very political, that comes from the US have polluted Nigeria with their pastors and brainwashed pastors that have been tra trained there to come back home and influence the politics that we have in Nigeria at the moment, not just Nigeria, they influence politics in Eastern Europe, Southeast, Southeast Asia and South America as well. They're everywhere corrupting, putting their dirty fingers into people's lives and ruining their lives for ruining people's lives. Mm -hmm. You know, and we had Dandaudos of the North, we had areas scatter in the South. We had people who lived quietly as trans and LGBT people. Way, 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 way before we start having the radical form of Wahhabism and, and evangelical. Hey, Sarah, let me just stop you two seconds there because I've got another question here that's yeah. for you.